the films that you like, is there an element of Britishness in them as one of the reasons or the factors that attract you to the movie? The good news for the UK uh, is that nearly three quarters of global audiences view Britishness as a mark of high quality. Uh, that's in television and in film. Well, a report by the Department for Digital Culture, Media and for some reason Sport mm -hmm. and the UK Global Screen Fund concluded that the UK screen industry had a strong presence globally and enjoys a high-quality reputation with perceived strengths in emotional engagement and sense of humour. Can't beat British humour. Uh, I don't know. Oh, well, come on. I don't know. Let's talk to Siobhan Sinner, who's TV and film commentator. Good to see you this morning, Siobhan. What is Britishness when it comes to TV and film? Do you know, that's the same question I was asking myself when I heard about this survey. What is the Britishness that they're talking about to you? Um, have they been watching The Great British Bake Off? Have they been watching EastEnders? Have they been watching Line of Duty or Doctor Who or Harry Potter? Uh, it's a very nebulous thing. And what I think is interesting about this survey is that um, the concept of Britishness isn't actually mentioned in the survey. It's something that's put forward by the Department of uh, Digital Culture, Media and Sport. Um, I also noticed that uh, one of the big promotions, as it says in its survey, is that um, by watching films and, uh, from Britain and, and television programmes, uh, people are attracted to come here. Now, that's a lovely thing, the tourist industry, that people look at vacations and think, oh, yeah, I fancy going and visiting uh, Platform 12 and Three Quarters. But is it the job of film and television to promote tourism and, 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 and your, what you're going to do, how you're going to spend your next holiday? I'm not sure. I thought it was original storytelling. Interesting, Siobhan. Uh, David Tennant, of course, Doctor Who, shares your view. He was outraged when John Whittingdale said in September that uh, public service broadcasters should carry shows that reflect Britain and British values. He said this was the creeping of politics into the creative art. So I suppose you, you share that view. Well, I'm not sure about that. What my feeling is, is the idea of Britishness is so nebulous. And even uh, when you try and pin down a, a politician to find out what he means, uh, when we talked to uh, John Whittingdale, the previous culture minister, he said, well, what is Britishness? He said, well, I mean, for only fools and horses and dad's army and the carry on films. And you think, well, yes, but these are decades old. Where are your references for a modern contemporary Britain here? So I think even the politicians are getting confused. And really, I'm not sure that Britishness is, is, is important, innately important to people's enjoyment of films. I mean, how do you make a film better? Do you make it more British? I think that sounds a daft answer, don't you? I mean, when it comes to, I mean, again, it's back to that what is Britishness. I mean, is it down, is it the actors? Is it the screenwriters? Is it the production mm -hmm. crew? I mean, I don't even know if Harry Potter, I mean, I know it's filmed over here and has a mainly British cast, but... You know, it was like a, was it Warner Brothers who made the You're Harry Potter making stuff? a great point. You're making I mean, so, a great I mean, point. Was it, is it actually a British production? That, that, that's the thing. I mean, here's a real issue that we have to, to confront at the moment, which is that um, the UK has never been busier as far as film and television production is concerned. Uh, we're building new studios. Uh, we've got, uh, our crews are so busy that we're actually running out of crews and equipment to facilitate the productions that are happening here. But here's a bigger issue. Um, we're very good at growing talent. Um, you know, the, the, the taxpayer pays for, you know, embryonic actors, playwrights, um, companies like the BBC, uh, develop production companies. But once our, our talent is cooked, if you like, companies like Warner Brothers, companies uh, like streaming services like Netflix can scoop up that talent with their deeper pockets. And the big question is, why aren't we able to take it on to that next step? Why aren't we having indigenous British companies that are growing the talent uh, at, at a higher level and to bringing the, keeping those profits, and the profits of something like Harry Potter, of course, massive. Why aren't those profits being kept in Britain rather than being sent overseas to America? I suppose the point is, even if you, you shouldn't be mandating it or you don't trying to define it, you can't deny that so-called British... Um, themed things like Downton Abbey or, or Bond is a form of soft power for Britain. It's a good advert, as you say, it attracts tourists. They want to come and see the beef eaters and the um, whatever it might be that they've seen in the films, the, the idea of Hogwarts. So there is no denying that it does have a certain power. 
I would certainly say that British talent is driving these successes. Um, soft power, uh, I don't know. I mean, again, we come back to what sort of things are people really enjoying? What sort of British productions are people enjoying? I mean, the French, for example, absolutely love Ken Loach and his gritty British realism. Um, are those British values that, um, that we consider to be soft power? I'm, I'm not sure that, uh, that, that Britishness is the power. It's the, it, but it, perhaps what we should consider is that made in Britain is considered around the world to be a guarantee of quality, and that, to be assured.